throughout this past season, the Ask Me Anything series became probably the most popular series on the channel and I really enjoyed doing it. And once the season ended, I told you guys that there probably wouldn't be a ton throughout the off season and I'd kick this series back up when next season begins. And that's still the plan. The series will be back on a consistent weekly basis when the 2021-22 season starts. But lately, I've been really itching to make one of these. So today, I have an off season episode for you guys. If you're a newer subscriber to the channel and you're not sure how the Ask Me Anything series works, it's a pretty simple concept. You guys literally just ask me anything that pertains to current events in the NHL. And as always, huge thank you to every single one of you who took the time out of your day to go ahead and leave a comment on the post. Obviously, I can't feature them all, but I appreciate every comment. I absolutely had to start off the video with this comment from Buns and Matherin, does Marc-Andre Fleury retire or does he report to the Hawks? So for those of you who don't know, the Vegas Golden Knights traded their Vesna Trophy winning goaltender Marc-Andre Fleury earlier today for literally nothing. It was a cap dump. They gave him away to the Hawks pretty much for free. It's actually funny, I just said in the video I uploaded this morning that I don't really talk about cap dump trades in videos all that much, but this is one that I definitely feel like I had to touch on. I understand that Vegas had to clear some cap space but to trade the face of your franchise, the person who has been the face of your franchise ever since it came into existence, who is heading into the final year of his contract, who had just won the Vesna Trophy this past season as the league's best goaltender, to trade that away for literally nothing, and for Flurry to have to find out about the trade on Twitter like the rest of us? Come on now. The NHL is a business, I get that, but there has to be exceptions at some point, doesn't there? Why not just let Flurry play out the final year of his contract and retire in Vegas? It was made public basically right after the trade was announced that Marc-Andre Fleury does not want to play for the Blackhawks or anywhere else for that matter besides Vegas. He doesn't want to move his family anywhere and apparently he's contemplating retiring because of this and can you really blame Marc-Andre Fleury for feeling that way especially with how everything is in the world right now? It's understandable as to why a guy who's 36 years old, his career's winding down, doesn't want to move his family, you know, across the country, right? So we'll see what happens. I can't help but feel bad for Marc-Andre Fleury here. If he does end up actually reporting to the Blackhawks, this is a huge W for Chicago. Getting a goaltender who just won the Vesna Trophy, not having to give up really anything at all to bring him in, and if it doesn't work out and Fleury just plays bad in Chicago, it's not that big of a deal because again, they didn't give up anything to bring him in, and he's on the final year of his contract. Moving on to the next question, I feel like this was a good follow-up to what we just talked about from JonahCraft7, who does Vegas sign in free agency to replace their backup goalie? It's definitely going to be someone relatively cheap in my opinion, I can't see them going out and getting a guy who's, you know, close to the cap caliber of a Robin Leonard and having to pay him, you know, close to what Robin Leonard makes because then they're just in the same position they were in with Fleury and Leonard. If I had to make a prediction, I guess I'll throw it a name, Auntie Ranta, maybe. He's a solid veteran goaltender who I think would be a nice backup option to Robin Leonard. And Vegas has also seen a lot of Ranta, you know, over the past couple of seasons because he's in their division. So he's a guy that I think would be a pretty nice fit and I really can't see Auntie Ranta costing anything more than like two and a half million. Moving on now, this comment comes from Lucas E. Ottawa wants a top six center. Who do you think is the best option, trade or a free agency signing. I think the best option of the two would be through free agency. I feel like anytime you can improve your team just through signing somebody and not having to give up assets, that's probably the best way to go. And there's actually a player that came to my mind right away when I read this question who's heading to unrestricted free agency tomorrow, and that is Pew Suter. I think he'd be a really good option for Ottawa in terms of a top six centerman, and he's still young. He's only 25 years old. If they sign him and he comes in and lives up to expectations and plays really well in that top six role similar to the way he played this past season in Chicago, that's a guy who could be a part of the Ottawa Senators' future, so I definitely think he's somebody that they should go after. The next comment comes from Molunda18, should Detroit tank for Shane Wright? As much as I would love to have Shane Wright on the Red Wings, I'm actually going to say no to this question, strictly because tanking does not work. I mean, we saw it with Detroit in the 2019-20 season, just a completely god-awful team. You could tell that they were trying to ice a bad team in order to get the best draft lottery odds, and they did their job. They finished last place in the league by a comfortable margin and they got the fourth overall pick. So given where Detroit is at in the rebuild right now, I don't think it would be the best option to just completely blatantly tank because I feel like that would kind of put a damper on the development of some of the young players on the Red Wings. So I'm going to go ahead and say no, they should not tank for Shane Wright. Detroit isn't going to make the playoffs even if they're not trying to tank. So they're going to get a chance at Shane Wright no matter what. It just won't be the highest odds. Continuing on now, this next comment comes from Yee Yee who says, do you think Ovechkin breaks the record during his new contract? 
contract, so I'm assuming you mean Gretzky's goal record. This was another piece of news that came out today. Alex Ovechkin was signed to a five-year contract extension by the Washington Capitals that carries an annual cap of nine and a half million. When I initially saw that it was five years, I was pretty shocked. I thought it was going to be a two, three-year deal max. I mean, this contract is going to take him till he's 41, but I won't lie. I'm happy that this has happened because that means Ovechkin's going to be in the league hopefully for another five seasons if he stays healthy, and it seems like he is going after that Gretzky goal record, and I personally want him to break it, and after seeing him sign this extension, I think he is going to. He's a freak of nature. He's aging incredibly well. If you do the math, if Ovechkin averages 33 goals per season over the next five seasons, he would break Gretzky's goal record, and I honestly think Ovechkin is capable of doing that. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he has a couple more 40-goal seasons left in the tank. This next comment comes from Peyton Ryan, who says, do you think the Flyers had a good or bad offseason? This is a pretty interesting question. I feel like I can confidently say the Flyers improved this offseason. I think getting Ryan Ellis alone greatly improved the team in an area where they really needed to improve. I think you can make an argument that getting Cam Atkinson for Jacob Voracek makes them better. It definitely doesn't make them any worse. As you guys know, I'm definitely not a fan of the Ristolainen trade. I think they overpaid big time. That being said, I don't think Ristolainen is going to make them a worse team, and I think a change of scenery is going to do wonders for Ristolainen's career. They gave up a ton of assets this offseason, even in the Shane Gossespair cap dump trade to Arizona. They gave up some decent draft picks. I'm still going to say they have had a good offseason, though, because this is a team that is trying to compete for a Stanley Cup when you look at the roster that they have constructed right now. Chuck Fletcher improved this team. They're going to be a lot better this upcoming season than they were last season. They mortgaged a lot of the future to do it, but they did improve. This next comment comes from Hugh Barkhurst, who says, who would you pick for best American NHL player, Austin Matthews, Patrick Kane, Jack Eichel, or other? I'm definitely going to go with option A here, Austin Matthews. I know there's probably going to be a lot of jokes in the comment section, you know, about the playoffs and everything like that, but what he did this past regular season, no other American player came close to that level. Austin Matthews is a top five player in the NHL right now, in my opinion, not just centerman, but top five overall. I definitely think he deserves the label right now as the best American-born player. Next up, this comment comes from Jacob Vorchek, newest member of the Blue Jackets. With Trigger gone, is Spencer Knight stepping into the Florida roster or they let him develop more and bring up Montembeau? My guess is it's definitely going to be Bobrovsky and Knight sharing the net for the Panthers this upcoming season. Although it's a very small sample size, Spencer Knight has looked amazing at the NHL level in both the small stint he played with the Panthers in the regular season and also in the playoffs. Oftentimes when a goaltender is drafted, it takes them four years years, five years, or maybe even more to make the jump and become a full-time NHLer, but there's some exceptions, and I think Spencer Knight is one of those exceptions. He is an unbelievable talent. This next comment comes from The Goalie, who says, what are your thoughts on Stastny's extension signing one year, 3.75 million with the Winnipeg Jets? I love this signing for Winnipeg. Although Paul Stastny is 35 years old, his career is aging very well. He's still an extremely impactful player. He's fit in really well in Winnipeg in both of his stints with the team. I think it was very smart of the Jets to bring Paul Stastny back and they got him at a really good number as well. Even though I just said how his career is aging very well, we know that decline is coming soon, so the fact that this is just a one-year contract I think makes it even better for the Winnipeg Jets. I mean, worst case scenario, he has a bad year, and then he's gone at the end of the season, right? This next comment comes from Simone Charette. I apologize if I butchered your name, but the question is, do you think Mackenzie Weger can keep up with the offensive stats like last season? And also, I appreciate the kind words. I don't think Weger is going to score at quite the pace he did this past season. I mean, he had, what, like 35 or more points in a 50 six game season. Very impressive season for him. He finished top 10 in Norris voting. With Ekblad coming back this season, I think he's going to take a lot of the offensive load off of Mackenzie Weger. So I would imagine we see his points per game come down. But in an 82 game season, this is a guy who I definitely think will still be able to give the Panthers like 25 to 30 points while being one of the best defensive players in the league. From F15 stroke, WTF was Carolina thinking? Yes, I'm referencing the Nedeljkovic trade. If you're looking for a more in-depth breakdown of the trade, I definitely recommend you go and give my Nedeljkovic trade video a watch. I uploaded it shortly after the trade happened. All I'm going to say in this video is, whatever the Carolina Hurricanes were thinking, I, as a Red Wings fan, am extremely happy they were thinking that way. Thank you, Canes. Moving on now from Stony 37 does Arizona have a weirdly decent team with picking up all the unwanted and overpaid players from other teams? I was saying this to my buddy the other day, but looking at Arizona's roster, it's absolutely hilarious. Some of the names on there and the amount of money they're making. I see what you're kind of getting at here. I could honestly see a scenario where a decent amount of the players on bad contracts that were traded to the Coyotes kind of play with a chip on their shoulder and maybe overachieve a little bit this upcoming season. And the Coyotes do still have good players, you know, Clayton Keller, Christian Dvorak, Nick Schmaltz, Jacob Chitrin, Phil Kessel, just to name a few. So yeah, I could see them not being completely awful, but if you're talking weirdly decent in terms of them being like a playoff team, I don't think that's 
going to happen. I really don't even think Arizona wants to make the playoffs. This next comment comes from Josh Tim, who says, which Red Wings prospects do you think get a chance in the NHL this season? The one that I think is just a guaranteed lock is Moritz Sider. He is ready for the NHL. I think playing him anywhere else at this point would just be pointless for his development. Another one that I think is more likely than not going to play in the NHL is Joe Valeno. He was a 2018 draft pick. He got a look in the NHL towards the end of this past season, and I think he did a pretty good job. Other than those two guys, though, I'm not really sure. It's kind of a lot of question marks. Lucas Raymond, I would say he's still one year away from coming to the NHL. I think we'll see him on Detroit's opening night roster for the 2022-23 season. Simon Edvinson, Sebastian Kosa, both of those guys, still definitely a couple years away. One that I think could be a wild card and may have a shot to make the team this season is Jonathan Berggren. He was a 2018 second round pick. He had a really, really good season in the SHL. So maybe he gets a look, but I really wouldn't count on it, honestly. We know what Detroit's like with their prospects. Jeff Blaschel especially, they do not rush things, that's for sure. Speaking of Red Wings prospects, this comment comes from Logan E, who says, what are your thoughts on Detroit taking Kosa instead of Wallstead? I was definitely surprised, but as you guys know, I'm not, you know, some draft expert. I don't know a whole lot about these prospects. However, I did know that these two were undoubtedly the two best goaltenders in the class, and most people figured that Wallstedt would go ahead of Sebastian Kosa. Most mock drafts that I looked at had Jesper Wallstedt going in the top 10 or, you know, in the 12 to 15 range, something like that. I'm not going to criticize the pick though, I mean, how could I? If you haven't seen Sebastian Kosa's numbers from the WHL this past season, go and look them up. 17-1-1 and above a 940 save percentage, I believe. Ridiculous numbers. I know he was playing on a stacked team, but the backup goaltender for the Edmonton Oil Kings had like below a 900 save percentage, so take that for what it's worth. On a side note though, it's pretty crazy that like two weeks ago, Detroit didn't really have a future in goal whatsoever. And fast forward a couple of weeks and now the Red Wings have a 25 year old Alex Andelkovic who just finished this past season as a Calder Trophy finalist. And we also have Sebastian Kosa who's one of the best goaltending prospects in the world. So pretty crazy turnaround, a pretty quick one as well. And now for the final comment of the video, this one comes from Dara Sampson. Not really off season related, but more so NHL in general. If goalies were allowed to be captains in the NHL, are there any current goal that you think would be a good captain of their team. Um, I would say Gary Price is probably my top option for sure. He's been a Montreal Canadian for his entire career. He's been the face of that franchise for such a long time. And I mean, Shea Weber may be forced to retire due to injury and that would leave them without a captain. And I think Gary Price would make a pretty damn good replacement if that was a thing and goaltenders were captains. He has a great demeanor. He never gets too high when the team's doing well. He never gets too low when the team's doing bad. I think Price would make a great captain. So that is going to do it for this off-season episode of the Ask Me Anything series. If you guys maybe want to see a couple more of these throughout the off season before next season gets underway then be sure to show your support on this video leave it a like let me know down below in the comment section you enjoyed and if you have any differing thoughts than me on some of the topics we talked about in this video then be sure to let me know your thoughts on that as well